Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents... Cab company threat to humanity. Where's the fire, Mason? In the lives hereafter. You'll find out, Sam. Believe me. Well, no. Aren't we clever tonight? Clever, courteous, and cautious. That's our motto, Sam. Gonna drive you somewhere? No, thanks. My insurance isn't paid up. And don't give me that cautious routine. How many pedestrians have you maimed today? Well, you, you kind of lose track after a while. Telling that school bus I ran off the road, I'd say about 37, but don't quote me. Look, Eddie, that flip lip's okay for the customers, but I don't like it, see? Yeah. And that yellow light you ran a block back, that's tough, too. So it was close. It wasn't red. Oh, look, Sam, you tail me for blocks every time you see me get in my cab, just hoping I'll make a wrong move. I don't like it. I'd just like to spell your name out in the ticket book. Well, go take your writing lessons in night school. You haven't done a violation on me in over a year. You've just been lucky. I can't get you with that yellow light. I can only warn you. But you'll slip all the way someday. You'll be right there to write out the ticket, huh? Stop dreaming, Sam. Just take it easy. No more yellow lights. You're lucky to get off with a warning. After this, I get tough. Sam McManus, the protector of the people. Knowing you're on the job really helps me to sleep nights. Nice. Yeah, you sleep nights and you drive nights. That's just the trouble. You do both at the same time. Says you. Go rest a burger. I'm late, Sam. Just watch yourself. Oh, I will. Especially when you're around. Between the two of us, I'm the only pleasant sight. Wise guy. Good night, Sam. Ham and eggs, two coffees, whole wheat toast. Charlie. Hi, Eddie. Make it black and make it hot. All right. How goes it? Oh, all right. I just had to run in with Sam McManus. Ticket? No, just a warning. Sam figures if he warns me enough, we'll break a law in spite of him. You and Sam have been playing cat and mouse for about ten years now. You know, I bet if either one of you quit, the other would be bored to death. Well, yeah, maybe so. Hi. Busy night? Fairly. I'm pretty tired, though. You need vitamins. I need you to pick me up on time. You know, I waited an hour and a half for you last night. We've been all through that, remember? I've got the scars to prove. And I solemnly swear it'll not happen again. Seems to me I've heard that before. Yeah, me too. You keep out of these family arguments. Did you see where they're on the mayor's neck again? No, I never read the papers. Get all my news from the passengers. Believe me, every third fare thinks he's Winchell. I not only get the news, I get opinions on the news. Oh, it's a great life. Well, don't sound so disgusted. You love it and you know it. I'm weak-minded. Well, you get around a lot. That's good. Me, I'm cooped up in here all night. If I was a cabbie, I'd go for the day shift. I like to sleep. It works out all right, though, with Molly slaving here nights. What would I do if I had nights off? And don't answer that. She might hear you. Don't you know it's impolite to sip the customer's coffee? It's a new service. Anytime we see a disreputable-looking character come in, we taste the coffee to be sure it's poisoned. Mm. I shall recommend this place to my friends in the underworld. Like your bookie? Oh, oh that was a low blow. Honey, Oh, I... now, don't tell me. That $10 missing from your paycheck goes to charity, of course. Sure, for sure. And I'll swear to it on a stack of daily double tickets. Mother warned me not to marry a man with a quick tongue. Hey, Eddie, you got a fair outside. Oh, thanks, Tom. And don't forget I get off at 1, not 2.30. We're not. I have reformed. So long, Charlie. So long. How's the kid, Tom? It cries. Don't we all? Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Where to? Uh, Sheridan Hotel, please. Wait a minute. 
A little chilly these nights. Been after the company to fix the heater in this cab, but uh, you know, they take the good old time. Thanks, the manager's inside. Don't like for us to smoke on the job. Oh. How's Molly? Oh, fine, thanks. Good. Say, I got a hot one going for tomorrow. No, 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 no. Your last hot one cost me five bucks. Oh, this one's for real. The owner lives here. He tipped me himself. Not good enough. When the horse tells you, let me know. Okay, so I get rich along. Who's this happy Joe I'm driving? Mr. Keith, you won't have to wait long. Hmm? How's that? It's been here every night for a week. His ex-wife lives here. He goes to the desk and asks for her. They tell him she's out. He leaves every night this week. Hmm. Too bad. If you'd stay in there for about three hours, nothing I like better than waiting as long as the old meter keeps ticking. <laughs> Say, you sure you won't take my hot tip for tomorrow? Oh, Billy boy. I'm through with the horses, taking a bingo. Okay, so be a hacky all your life. There's our man. Dorman. Yes, sir. Did you see my wife go out this evening? Well, Mr. Keith, I don't remember. I think so. But we were very busy early this evening. Uh, you know my wife? Yes, sir. Would you call me at this number when you see her come in? Mr. Keith, we're not supposed to. I'd appreciate to. it very much. Well, uh, please. All right, Mr. Keith, I will. Forget. No, sir, I won't. Where to, sir? Where to, sir? One thirty-two. Never mind. Wait for me. Virginia, wait, please. I've got to talk to you. Max, please. I won't take long. Everything's been said, Max. Surely you can't wipe away five years without even discussing them. Can't I? I'm very busy, Max. Call me sometime. They won't put through any of my calls, and you know it. I've, I've tried. I've called every day. Some guys just don't know when to quit. Who cares? Let them argue all night, just as long as baby hair keeps sticking. Molly ever give you that bad of a time? She did. I'd break her neck. Yeah. Edith said she'd leave me last month. I got a choked her. Did she leave? No. That's the reason I got a choked her. I'm sick of you, Max. I'm sick of all the promises and the big hopes. Now, leave us alone. No, just a minute. I'm not finished yet. Well, I am, and for good. Don't try to see me. Don't call. Just get lost and stay lost. Now, Virginia, I tell you what, I've had enough of this. You lost, boy. I always make it like Tarzan. Yeah, you better count ten, Billy. Our corner loses. Well, do any good, Mr. Keith. Don't make trouble. Where to now? There's a nice bar right around the corner. Yes, I know. I've been there many times. I could take you for a short drive if you'd like. The bridge. The bridge? The big one. Okay. Big bridge it is. Which end of the bridge you want? The middle. Going swimming? Any objections? Cold night for a dip, that's all. You might drive me to a police station. I might, but I won't. You seem awfully calm. I should be upset. 
I don't know. Look, mister, my job is to drive you where you want to go. What you do when you get there is your business. As long as you pay the cab fare, I'm a guy who likes money. You won't try to stop me? Why should I? Go ahead and jump. Just looking, thinking. All these stores, all these shops. Windows full of merchandise. So what's funny about that? Well, I never noticed how many shops there are. With everything under the sun for sale. Except happiness. Too bad they can't manufacture emotions and put them in bargain basements. I got a hunch you're getting pretty close to the poetry reciting stage. Most of them give out with a few lines about the misery of life before they hit the bridge. Of course, I haven't had one like you in quite a spell. Just what do you mean, one like me? Well, you get him. Guy thinks he's going to jump off the bridge at night and be exclusive? <laughs> yeah, that's old stuff to a cabbie. Every once in a while, we get one of you state liners. A what? State liner. That's a trade name for you jumpers. You know, the middle of the bridge. That's where the line is between this state and the next one. Yeah, they fish you guys out all the time. Of course, like I say, I haven't had one. I didn't quite a spell. Well, I'm surprised to hear you... Regard me as just a, another customer. Forget it. You need all types driving a hack. You're a strange man. I've been driving a cab for ten years, mister. You can say that again. Oh, oh that right rear tire. Blow out? Yeah. I knew it was going to happen. That thing's got no more rubber on it than a Mickey Mouse balloon. Well, what can we do? Fix it, unless you got a brand new solution for flat tire. You knew this would happen. That's why you agreed to drive me to the bridge. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I can arrange a blowout with the snap of a finger. I saw a tack in the road, ran over it on purpose. I'm sorry. Of course, it's not your fault. I, I just wasn't thinking. Look, I told you I'd drive it to the bridge, and I will. Now, if you can't wait just a few minutes, go ahead on another cabbie. I hope you find one as mercenary as I am. I'll wait. Can I help? Oh, you might loosen the lugs on that wheel. Speed it up a little bit. I haven't worked for these for a long time. Well, I wish I could say the same. The only thing a man gets from working with his hands are calluses. Maybe. But a man who lives by head work runs a greater risk. He may get a callous brain. You can't see the marks of his labor. Up high up? Yeah, a little bit more. Huh? Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Well, the suicide special will be ready before you say arsenic. Oh, I, I don't know what I really expected, but I, I hardly thought that you'd take everything so matter of fact. Well, why should I be upset? You don't seem to be now. Earlier you weren't saying a word, now you're talking like a taxi driver. Earlier I was worried. I had one hope. The fear of losing that hope worried me. Now I have no hope. I lost it. I lost the worry with it. I lost everything. I felt the same way after the eighth race yesterday. Funny. I don't mind talking now. There's a great deal of comfort in having made a decision. Whether the decision's a good one or a bad one. I've made up my mind what I'm going to do, and I'll do it. No more worry. No more hope. Yes, I... I feel much lighter. Well, if you start gulping in that river, you'll feel heavy again. Ooh. What's wrong? Oh, my back. I guess I strained it on the jack. It gives out now and then ever since the war. I can finish up here. Uh, you can still drive. Yeah, I'll be all right in a minute. Mm. I'll get you closed, Derek. My appearance won't make any difference where I'm going. Oh, yeah. I guess a heavy old coat will be a little out of place. No offense, no offense. I first time I ever had a passenger do my work for me. You seem like a happy man. Me? Uh uh. You're whistling. Well, so is the tea kettle, but it's boiling inside. How far is the bridge? 
far, just a few miles. A few miles. The last few miles. Easy, boy. Sound like you're getting to that poetry stage again. No, I... I won't get maudlin, though I have reason enough. Maybe you have, if you have reason enough to jump. Reason enough? Let me tell you something. You're driving a man who... Skip it, will you? I don't want to hear about it. Believe me, I got enough troubles of my own without listening to a state liners, too. Yeah, but listen to what happened to... I told you I didn't want to hear about it. Were you ever disappointed? In what? Love, money. Never had enough of either to be disappointed in. Very well, then. What about self-respect? Mister, do you think if I had any self-respect, I'd be driving you to the middle of a bridge? All right. Why are you doing it? Because I think maybe you've got an extra 50 in your wallet. You don't want to get wet. <laughs> I've got more than that. What's more, it's all yours. Well, this is my lucky day. told myself this morning things would work out. My wife Molly and I go to the hospital to visit my kid, and the doctor says he needs more treatments. Wife breaks up, but I say everything will work out all right. Looks like I'll be able to pay my bills after all. Wish that's all I had to worry about. Paying bills. What do you mean? You try to make it sound like it isn't anything. Well, it isn't, really. Maybe not to you. But look, Lester, you drive a hack all week and then watch your paycheck go out in payments all in one day. See if you laugh then. Well, you at least have a family. Yeah, two of them, mine and my wife's. You ever live with in-laws? It isn't any fun. But we got two other kids besides the one in the hospital. Molly, my wife, works in that hash house every night, and the kids got to have somebody to look after them, so we live with their mother. Boy, that's enough to drive anybody off a bridge. You missed my point. Maybe so, but you missed mine. You think bills are nothing, huh? Listen, mister, my wife's father's in a rest home. City won't put him in an institution here. Oh, no. Got to drive all the way out to Summerfield County every Sunday to see him. Every Sunday when they get there, he starts screaming about a new wheelchair. He wants to keep up with the other fellas. Wish you'd tell me how I could afford a new wheelchair. You could always get a loan. It's pretty easy these days. I know. I got three already. All I do is worry about the payments. Oh, it's a big joy. Besides that, I have to keep up my insurance. Well, all right, you got a lot of bills to pay. I'm not unsympathetic, believe me. But I still wish bills were all I had to worry about. And so do I. They're rough enough. Don't treat them light. Look, why do you think I worry so about keeping up with the payments of my insurance? You're on the way to a bridge to die. You want it that way. Quite a difference when you don't want it. The doc tells you you have no other choice. What? I saw my doctor a couple of months ago about my back. He gave me a complete examination. And then looked at me with a long face and told me I had two or three years to go at the outside. I don't pity you, mister. I had no idea. Neither is my wife. Thank goodness I've been able to keep it from her. I hate to see her working in that diner every night and taking insults from every bum in town. But we need all the money we can get. I hate to leave her need even bills. Everyone has money worries. But with love and companionship, one can face them. I thought all you had to worry about was... Oh, forget it. I don't want you to think about what I worry about. It's none of your business. It just made me mad, that's all. You better hold on. We're getting near the bridge. when you said I could have your wallet? It's yours. I already told you that. Okay, then. If you mean it, make your proposition. I'll take your wallet on one condition. And what's the condition? I'll take your wallet if you'll take mine. I don't understand. We're about the same height, Bill, wouldn't you say? Yes, I think so. Yep. Yeah, it'll work out fine. You'll have to make yourself clearer. Okay, then. The last few miles, even with all the talking, I've been doing a little thinking. We change wallets and clothes. It's a long drop down there. They'll fish you out, see the wallet first, find my name. They'll think it's me instead of you. Do you really want to die? Who said anything about dying? You die, I'll live. Molly will collect the insurance, quit the diner, pay Wendy's hospital, settle some other bills, 
And with your wallet and a tank full of gas, I'll be in good shape. What do you say? You know, it's true. You said I wasn't exclusive. I was just another passenger. You're right. If you can think of somebody else for a moment, you realize that there are other people. I told you that. You're not the first state liner. They go off here like in the aquacade. I didn't mean that. I mean other people with troubles. Troubles? Let's not talk about troubles. I could go on about mine for ten hours. What's the use? What's the use? Why think about them? Talk about them? Let them get you down? You have to cope with them. Turn the cab around. What? Get me to a bus line. Okay, sir. in a minute. I'd be glad to drive you all the way home if you just tell me where you live. No, this this suits me fine. I'll get on the bus. I, I want to be with people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. Look so surprised, Barney Oldfield. How long have you been on my tail? Since you went to the bridge. <laughs> you know, Sam, this is one time I'm really not mad. I just wish I'd known you were tailing me. I was kind of worried there for a moment. I thought he was really going to do it. Save the double talk, huh? And pull out the operator's license. What do you mean? I knew you'd slip if I just kept waiting, Mason. Well, I'll get it. You've been driving a cab for ten years, right? Right. You can't make a U-turn on the bridge. Come on, the license, the license. Signed it, will you? That's Sam. Signs just like John Hancock. You should have seen the look on his face and he handed it to him. You thought he'd captured public enemy number one. Well, you did make a U-turn on the bridge, didn't you? Well, I told you, the state liner. He might have changed his mind again. Did you tell Sam that? He thought it was the best alibi I'd heard all week. Well, at least you got a $50 tip. Well, that's not the point. I don't mind paying the ticket. I just hate to see McManus so smug. Uh, speaking of the 50, I doped out the third race for tomorrow, Eddie. Looks good. Oh? Huh? Oh, no. I have other plans for your newfound wealth, Mr. Mason. Oh? Yes, indeed. A marriage license, a plain ring, and a week's honeymoon. There goes that song again. Now, I'm serious. <laughs> no, no. No, no escape. I'm a determined woman. And there's some hungry customers at the far table. I'm not finished yet. Stay put. You know, she's right. But a guy like you would go for the home bit. Two or three kids. What do you mean a guy like me? I like being single. No trouble, no problems, no in-laws, no wheelchairs. Huh? Skip it. Why would I want to get all mixed up with the... Ah, oh, she sure is pretty. Yep. Sweet, too. Yeah. You haven't uh, been gone with her three years, haven't you? Yeah. Okay, okay, cut it out, will you? Just trying to help. Trying to help me be a state liner myself in a few years? You got it all wrong, Eddie. If a bachelor stops the way the pros and cons of getting married, he's dead. You gotta dive right in, blind. Then suddenly it's over and you're a happy man. But you gotta jump right in. Go ahead and jump, huh? <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing, nothing. Well, so wise up, get married. Think you could find a girl to take her place? I could, but you couldn't. That's a good point, Charlie. Yes, yeah, sir, that's a real good point. Our star, Dick Powell, will return in a moment. Tonight's play was brought to you by the Parker Pen Company. Next week, your host will be the Singer Sewing Machine Company. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Four Star Playhouse and all the members of the Parker organization, thank you for being with us this evening. We hope you enjoyed the play, and we hope you'll be with us again next week. Thank you and good night. <laughs>